Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Great to have you with me here today. Looking forward to diving into these weekend house calls where we answer our community's questions each and every weekend. I hope you've been tuning in over the past couple of years. But if you're new to the show, we've answered now, I believe, well over 3,000 questions from the community. Always excited to be able to see what questions have been coming in. Typically, we get to anywhere between five and 10 questions answered per episode. And this one should be no different. I just took a quick peek at the topics for today's questions. I haven't been able to read the whole questions yet. I saved those for the show. I really like them to be fresh. I like the answers to be raw and honest and just kind of give you that first starting point, right? So it's what could I give you as an alternative opinion, a second opinion, someone else to lean on in order to say, what could I be missing here? Where should I start? So that's what I like to do. Always happy to do that. I appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate you sending in these questions. So we've got a lot, a lot come in every single week. Right now, we are answering questions that came in the beginning of 2019. So this first one came in on January 6th. So as you know, right now, of course, we're about 10 to 12 weeks behind on our questions. We've been maintaining that pace now for about six months. So we're keeping pace with all of the questions that come in, which means that whenever your question has been asked, typically it will take between 10 and 12 weeks to get to your question. If that range changes, I will, of course, let you know. And for those people that want an answer faster to their questions, they can simply ask that question at cabralsupportgroup.com. And uh, my health coaching team will absolutely do their best and they're fantastic to get you the answers that you do need. If it's a product question, if it's a supplement question, if it's a lab test question, meaning like, which lab should I choose? I'm happy to answer it, just knowing that it will take 10 to 12 weeks just because we go in the order that they come in. But you can also just ask my team and my team will be able to get you those answers. Keep in mind, they've worked under me for many years now. They know the protocols. They know the labs inside and out. And whenever they don't know the answer to the question, they ask me and I provide that answer. So let us know how we can help. We're happy to do that. But in order for them to get on the podcast, I can answer about 15 to 20 per weekend. And we do these on the weekend house calls. So there you have it. Now let's get right into the show. So the first question is coming in from Bria or Bria. It's B-R-I-A. I am desperate for help for my sister. Please. For two years, she's been unable to eat almost anything except for a few foods. One mistaken ingredient and she's vomiting for 72 hours with a raging migraine. Even a sip of water causes her to vomit, so she can't keep anything down during this period of time. Not medicine, not electrolytes, nothing. She knows she has SIBO and bought the CBO protocol from your website. One pill was not good, put her over the edge. Please help. Western medicine doctors call it acid reflux, but we know it's not that. How can she get the SIBO out of her system if she can't even take one pill? The number of days missed of work, the amount of money spent, and the helplessness of her husband and her family is very difficult to watch. She recently saw a functional medicine practitioner in Anaheim, California, but hasn't been able to even start that lingual medicine yet. We need guidance. Thank you, Brea. All right, I'm happy to help. Over the past couple of house calls, meaning let's say the last, I would say, four or five weeks, I've answered a bunch of questions, and I know obviously you wrote in your question before that, on what to do if you can't take supplements, if you have a sensitivity to supplements. Here's the thing. This is different. So in your sister's case, we want to get her help, of course. Now, I've only worked with a couple people. Again, I've worked with everybody across the spectrum. I've worked with people that can only eat three or four different types of, like three or four foods total. Again, I've seen it all. And I've worked with a couple people that are literally not able to hold anything down. So here's the deal though. I want to be able to help, but you do need to work with someone that you can speak with on a regular basis. Okay. That's the truth. And so obviously I'm not the best fit for that, but I can tell you exactly what you need to do and meaning like to move forward. 
there's a couple things. So if we can't hold down food and we can't hold down supplements, so what we can do is this. There's a protocol by Integrative Therapeutics. It's, and believe me, you don't need to do this unless you can't hold anything down and you can't eat any foods and you have a reaction to everything. And it's called the Elemental Diet by Integrative Therapeutics. And it's a minimum of two weeks. We typically do it for two to three weeks. Again, we've only had to do this twice in almost a decade of practice. So that's over 100,000 you know, people that we've seen and we've had to do this twice. So it's not very common, right? Everyone thinks that they need it, but they don't. So the Candida Bacterial Overgrowth Protocol, along with the Sensitive Gut Guide, all of that is exactly what people need. But for those people that can't hold anything down, you start there and then you do a very slow introduction of the foods that she can't eat. But what the elemental diet is, is just shakes. It's just liquid. What we have to do is essentially get that body back to a relaxed, non-inflamed state. And I need your sister to see if, if she has H. pylori or parasites. She needs to do a stool test to find out if she had H. pylori and parasites. We offer a stool test that tests for both of those, but she can probably get that from her functional medicine doctor as well. So we run the 401H. That's what we recommend, the stool and parasite test. You can see it at Equilibrium Nutrition. You don't have to get it there. You can purchase it from your local doctor if you want. Make sure, because if you have nausea like that, that's well beyond SIBO typically, especially if it happens right away. So we need to check on a very large H. pylori overgrowth. If that's the case, we need to use everything that we can to help your sister get rid of that. That's what it sounds like because she gets migraines, which could be a histamine-based issue. I want to go with H. pylori first. I want to really fast her body. Now I know she's probably losing a lot of weight because she can't hold any food down. So this is why we need real medical intervention and I want the best for your sister. So that's what I'm recommending. All right, Jeanette is up first. I felt I couldn't ask this question on the Facebook page due to privacy for my daughter. I have searched the list of podcasts and have not located the information on osteogenesis imperfector. My daughter was clinically diagnosed with OI type 1 20 years ago and has had 10 fractures predominantly involving leg bones. Prior to 2001, she had not endured pain other than when she broke. In March 2011, she had to move four hours away to attend university, and that very weekend, she had to be hospitalized for an abscess removal. Soon after, she had started having back pain and has endured eight years of constant pain while studying a pharmacy degree. Over this time, she has taken anti-inflammatories, varying strengths since 2011. Plus, for the longer questions, I, I urge you to head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and simply look at today's podcast, and you'll be able to read along with all of those questions. Today is episode 1035. So you can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1035 for the direct show notes page and to read along with all of the questions right now. All right, so she's lost about 22 pounds, 10 kilograms in 2018. Was hoping that she would lessen the pain. She tries to exercise, it gets worse. In 2012, we took her to an alternative practitioner who had on water and fruit for six months, but it made no difference. And consequently, she is very skeptical of all things alternative. As well as wellness client, I am starting to experience success. As one of your wellness clients, I'm starting to experience success. Please help with some ideas for my daughter. Okay. So thank you for writing in for your daughter. We are happy to help. This is obviously something that is congenital, right? That she's born with it, but that doesn't mean that we have to let it get to um, a heightened state. We've actually worked with a handful of people with OI, exactly what you're talking about. And our job is to keep their body inflammation low, to keep their digestion strong, and to keep all of their minerals up as well as protein to be able to keep that body strong. We're very careful with exercise. We're typically only doing body weight based work and even being careful with uh, interval based sprints. We've gotten great results with this, but to be honest, it's mostly all lifestyle, except we run the organic acids test. We run the stool test to look for any gut based issues, especially with that many anti inflammatories that your daughter took. And we run the hair tissue mineral analysis to look for heavy metal based issues and to look for overall mineral levels. Now, keep in mind, you know, being skeptical of alternative medicine because you saw one practitioner and they put you on a fruit diet for six months doesn't mean the whole industry does that. You know, it's not. And I can even see where the practitioner was coming from. I personally wouldn't do that. But they put you on a diet that's basically low inflammatory and that's what they wanted to do. So I can see what they were doing. It's just, I mean, you can't lump everybody all together, right? It's like, 
Not every doctor is the same. Not every surgeon is the same. Tax accountant is the same. Personal trainer is the same. Hairdresser is the same, right? Like it's like everybody's different. So you find one that you feel is the the best uh, match for you. So there's no quick fix. I wish I could give you that. I would love to give you that. I really would just like in our last question with Bria, these, both of these, we started out right out of the gates, very serious, right? These are very strong issues. And here's the thing. I lab test. I see what the imbalances are. When I find the imbalances, I either replace what she's deficient in, which I know that there's no doubt she's deficient in something because we all are, unless we've lab tested. And there's most likely some type of toxicity. That's what we work on. We'll do a functional medicine detox after we do some of those labs, and then we'll find out the right protocol for your daughter. She doesn't have to work with us. She can work with someone, an integrative health practitioner that's more local to her if she prefers that. All right, Kara's up first or up next. Do you have a list of recommended functional medicine practitioners in certain areas, or do you have a suggestion for finding a good one? I live in Fair Oaks, California. Thanks. All right, Kara, thanks for writing in. So in the rain barrel effect, I give a couple of websites but I can't vouch for anyone except the integrative health practitioners in level two that can run all the labs that we're talking about. So our level one practitioners are absolutely phenomenal. And we'll have a webpage up very shortly at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. I invite you to check that out, integrativehealthpractitioner.org. And if you're looking for an individual practitioner, you can even email us at support at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. And what else can I say? In May of this year, we will have our first graduates of level two, and they are, will be the ones that are able to run labs for you as well. Right now, you can work with a practitioner, one of my great, amazing health coaches that are already IHP level two certified because they were been working under me for years. And to work with them, you could simply email support at stephencabral.com if you'd like. To find a local practitioner and you don't want to work with uh, an integrative health practitioner, you could search for a functional medicine doctor or naturopathic doctor, Fair Oaks, California, and you would be able to locate one, check out their successes. You know, Maybe you can get a personal referral from someone, but I personally do not have any recommendations there. So hopefully that helps. All right. Patrick's up next. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. I can't even express you how much I appreciate it. I'm 45 years young. I, I like that. I'm 45 years young, five foot seven and weigh 170 pounds. When I started listening to you six months ago, I was 205 pounds, just making some simple lifestyle changes and taking your daily nutritional support. I've always been very reluctant, but now I feel the best I've ever felt. I've been listening to about three or four of your podcasts a day since hearing the ones on saunas, and I now try to use one three days a week for 20 minutes. I know you say it's a great way to detox and has a ton of benefits, but I'm not sure if you answered if it detoxes heavy metals. If I can't get to the gym to use the sauna, I have a Dr. Teal's Epsom salt bath that will have some of the same benefits that will detox heavy metals. Thanks again for all you do. Keep up the good work. Patrick, that is an amazing success story. We really appreciate you writing in with that. You know, to lose 35 pounds in six months is absolutely fantastic. And for you at five foot seven, 45 years young, to go from 205 to 170 is such a much better weight. That's so great. I have no doubt that that will be good for your energy, good for your longevity, good for your overall health. Three to four podcasts a day is fantastic. So that means you'll be able to get through all of them in a year. That's what I like to hear. You're doing the sauna three times a week for 20 minutes. That's fantastic. So does it detox heavy metals? The answer is yes. An infrared sauna, especially a near, well, a a deep, you know, far, mid, near, they're all great. So I don't want to talk negatively. I mean, they really are. The one that I had, I still have my own personal one, but when I had the massive wellness center, we had the near, far, mid. I'm recommending the, there's an inexpensive one. You can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Just type in IFR sauna and you'll see the one that I recommend. It's super small, small footprint. Your head can stay out of it. And yes, it has been proven to detox heavy metals. The Epsom salt bath is not proven to detox heavy metals. However, it does allow for detoxification. Here's why. The Epsom salts, you get magnesium, which calms the nervous system, which is great, gets you in the parasympathetic, which helps with detox. And then it has sulfate, magnesium sulfate. That's what Epsom salt is. It's technically not even salt. 
the sulfur helps to open up that phase two detox pathway as well. And it can be absorbed right through the skin. The only reason I'm not recommending the Dr. Teals though, and I hope you listen to this, Patrick, is because Dr. Teals no longer uses a natural form of lavender. They use a synthetic form. So I recommend just plain old natural Epsom salt and then put in your own lavender drops if you're using a lavender-based brand. If it's just Dr. Teal's Epsom salt, it should be fine with no added chemicals or anything to it. So thank you, Patrick, for writing in. Keep up the great work. It sounds like you're doing fantastic. Uh, Recommend the infrared sauna if you have the availability. If not, you can use the regular sauna as well, which does have the detoxifying effects, just not as great in terms of heavy metals as the infrared sauna. Okay. Elizabeth's up next. Hey, Dr. Brawl, I recently came across serapeptase and found it very interesting, particularly concerning circulation and cysts. I decided to take 80,000 IU, Sarah for a cyst located on the anfermary fold of the breast as it appears. Sarah may be extremely helpful for eliminating cysts. Unfortunately, upon using Sarah on two separate occasions, it caused vomiting. The second time I only took one tablet, I contacted the company to ask if this could possibly be a detox Herkimer reaction or if it generally does not agree with the body. Unfortunately, they they were unhelpful. Having done some further research, serapeptase can result in nausea and may be best to start off with lower potency, even though the majority of serapeptase starts at 40,000 IU. I did a podcast search and you briefly mentioned serapeptase on a podcast number 617. The notes link is missing, so not sure of the brand suggested, but I wonder if you had any thoughts. Perhaps it can conflict with some people and I should discontinue. May also have underlying candida thyroid issues. Thank you for all you do. All right. This is a really great question. So if our link is no longer there for episode 617, stevencabal.com forward slash 617, I need to help with that. So I'm going to make sure my team takes a look at that and then what I'd like to do is I will add the link to that episode. So Elizabeth, head on back to episode 617, and I will make sure that I link up a serapeptase. What that is for the people who don't know is an enzyme. It's a type of proteolytic enzyme that can help to break down cysts, tumors, plaque in the arteries. We actually use quite a bit of proteolytic enzymes serapeptase, and natokinase. Natokinase in some people's vocabulary. So what is it good for? Well, it's good for cardiovascular issues. It is good for tumors and cysts, and that's what you use it for. So here's the thing. I agree with you that it's a strong product, and it could cause nausea. A couple things. Okay, so what do you do if the smallest, like one capsule is 40,000 IU? So for example, our friend in the very beginning today, Bria, when she starts back on the CBO protocol, if she was working with us directly or an integrative health practitioner, we would actually have her open up a capsule and just do a little bit, meaning like for Bria, a dusting, a tiny, tiny amount for her body to get used to some of those herbs, right? So that's it. That's all we would do. Now, Elizabeth, for you, I don't know your tolerance. Right now, it's not 40,000 I use. So what we would do is we would say, okay, well, why don't we start at 10,000? That's a quarter of a capsule. So we would open that up and then we would add that to your shake or whatever it might be. Now, if it's a tablet, as long as it's not an enteric coated or time release one, I would simply use a pill splitter. That's it. And I would just cut it down in quarters. A couple other things is that you might do better with capsules than tablets because sometimes there's wax coating on tablets and it just might not work great for you. So I would use a different company. And again, like I know the name of the company that you mentioned. I have nothing against them. You just might want a different product because it is a different brand because it's a great product. So those are some of the the easier workarounds that I just gave you as you can start with a much smaller amount. But I like where you were going because it is possible... Uh, not about the thyroid, but it is possible that you have a candida-based issue. Serapeptase and netokinase are great for breaking down biofilms and candida as well. So, I mean, again, it's a great product. You don't need to use it forever, but typically you are doing high doses. It's on an empty stomach in the morning and then before bed or just all in the morning if you want to, but that's a lot. So that's how we use it. We use it for degenerative joint issues. We use it for rheumatoid arthritis. We use it for cardiovascular. We use it for cysts, for tumors. 
and it's great. So if anybody wants to learn more about it, simply look up Proteolytic, P-R-O-T-E-O-L-Y-T-I-C, Proteolytic Enzymes, or you can check out Serra, S-E-R-R-A, Peptase, or Natto, N-A-T-T-O, Kinase, K-I-N-A-S-E. And you can get more information on that as well. All right, let's do one more question. This is from Elizabeth. Could be the same Elizabeth. I don't know. Might be a different one. Okay, same day. This came in on January 8th. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Could you suggest anything for getting bloated on a flight? I tend not to eat, drink anything during a flight unless I'm flying business. It may be a light meal and bottled mineral water. I tend to have peppermint tea at least two cups before the flight, even on a sleeper service flatbed, and not eating or drinking anything may cause them bloating. I never touch the water, tea, coffee on a flight due to the hygiene. Even after a flight, I can occasionally be left bloated for a couple days. Doesn't aggravate an inflamed stomach during the flight specifically indicate something such as candida, or is it simply the air pressure that can be hard on a sensitive stomach? Is there anything that you would recommend that would prevent an uncomfortable stomach during a flight? Thank you very much. Elizabeth, great question. And I get to use my Ayurvedic background here. So this is a vata-based disturbance. So now kapha, it resides in the stomach. However, this is the opposite of a kapha-based issue really here. We're talking about bloating, gas, discomfort, air, movement, you are at 30,000 feet in the air. That is going to exacerbate vata. So my highest recommendation is actually not a light food or it would you could do some fruit for sure, but you might not want to do anything. And instead of the peppermint tea, which by the way is great, but it's more cooling. And we actually need something that's healing and a little bit spicy and acts as a digestive aid. So I'm going to give you a couple things to do. So one, actually this was yesterday. So check out yesterday's show. Rapid immune boost is great for the immune system, but it can even act as a little bit of a digestive aid. So you get a two for one, boost the immune system and you get this nice little digestive aid. But there is nothing more powerful the nausea and bloating due to a vata-based disturbance, which would be like car sickness, motion sickness, or flying, than ginger tea. But I want you to get the ginger tea that's the full ginger, a spicy-based one. One of my favorites is traditional medicinals, but it's straight ginger. There are no other ingredients except ginger, and it has to be spicy. You want the spice because that will help with the settling of the stomach, and it will help calm the vata as well. Definitely no heavy proteins during the flight. If you have anything, it might be a little oatmeal, which can calm vata with some cinnamon on there, some digestive aid, or you might simply do the ginger, the hot, and it should be hot as well, hot, spicy ginger tea. You can do ginger chews. So they make a, it's not a candy, but it's a chew made of pure ginger. You can get that as well. And I'd love for you to start there. There are additional recommendations we could give. This is a great question to ask only if needed, because I believe what I just gave you is going to be the answer for you. But you're also welcome to ask this question inside of the cabralsupportgroup.com and other people from the community will give their suggestions. Another decent one would be adding a little bit of apple cider vinegar to some water. If you do drink some water, which will help with digestion anything a little bit more acidic in the water, meaning like a little lemon. I know that these are alkaline-based nutrients, but they're not alkaline until the minerals hit your body. So they're acid, and in terms of lower pH when it's in that water, and that's actually what's going to help with the digestion. So first, let's do the ginger. You can do the rapid immune response that I spoke with yesterday's podcast, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and thank you to everyone that wrote in today. There are great questions. It's definitely some more complicated cases, but that's what we're here for. We're here to help you, point you in the right direction, get you started, whether it's with us or whether it's with the integrative health practitioner or local practitioner, wherever you are. That's what we're here for. We really are. We want to help guide you to your best self. And that's the best health that you can have, the best wellness, the best weight loss, the best anti-aging. That's what it's about, getting your body balanced and enjoying life. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Have a great rest of the weekend. We'll talk with you again tomorrow. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? 
after 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.